Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create an embossed effect in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to take any graphic and turn it into an embossed effect that literally makes it look like it's pressed in or out of a piece of paper. This technique can be done on any type of surface and it's really great for seeing a preview of what an actual emboss might look like on your final design. So here we are in Photoshop. We've got a piece of paper here. Let's go ahead and open up our designs. We're gonna hit Control or Command O for open. And I've got a fork and a knife that I got from the nounproject.com as well as a menu here. So let's hold Control or Command. We're gonna open both of those up. And by the way, you can download all of these assets on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. You can download both of the images and then we'll link you to the noun project, which is my favorite website for getting any type of icons. Alrighty. First thing we wanna do is go ahead and get everything into the same document because we have three different documents here. We just need it all to be on this piece of paper. So we're gonna grab our move tool. We're just gonna hold the shift key and click and drag from one document to another. There we go, and you can see it does the transfer automatically and adds a new layer. All right, there we go, we're done with this one. Let's go ahead and close it out. And the menu, let's transfer that and close that out as well. So let's hit F for full screen. We're just gonna make the menu invisible right now and focus just on our fork and knife. Now the key to making this effect look realistic is to take into account the texture of the paper. As you see right now, the outline of our fork and knife is really perfect. And that wouldn't be the case if it was actually pressed into a piece of paper. You would see a little bit of the texture of the paper in the actual outline. So the first thing we're going to do is give the outline of our object just a little bit of texture. It's going to make it look more realistic. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And I'm going to place that layer right under my fork. We'll just double click and call this fork. There we go. So on this new layer, we're going to hit M for our marquee tool. We're gonna make a selection right around this area and we're gonna to go to edit and then down to fill and we're just gonna go ahead and fill this with white. So we're just gonna go down to white and hit okay. So we have a white background and a uh, pure black element and this can be anything. We're using a fork and knife here because I'm kind of trying to create a menu or something like that but this could be any design. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and merge these two layers together. This white layer and the layer with your design on it. The reason we're gonna do that is because we have to use the filter gallery to uh, wind up like distressing the edge a little bit. And that doesn't work if you just have an object on a transparent background. So you need to make sure that your object has a white background so the light and dark elements can interact with each other. So let's go ahead and hit shift and click on the two of those layers. So our fork and layer three and hit control or command E to merge those together. So now we say we just have one layer with a white background and our black logo. Okay, so you can start here if you've already got a white background with a black logo, that's perfect. The next thing we're gonna do is turn this into a smart object. And the reason we're doing that is because we wanna create a filter and I might wanna change the settings of that filter. So if you don't want a filter to be stuck in place, you wanna make sure you can do a smart object that's gonna allow you to change it at any time. So let's go ahead and right click on our fork layer. We're gonna go down to convert to smart object. You'll see it right here. There we go, convert to smart object. And you can see my little icon here, the smart object. Now we're gonna go up to our filter and we're gonna go down to filter gallery. Now here in our filter gallery, this is a great place to just preview your effect. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna start off with our spatter effect. Now you can see I can increase things like my spray radius and my smoothness. We can bring this up and down. So you can start to see, okay, this might look like it was actually pulled out of effect. Let's just go ahead and hit okay here. I know that doesn't look exactly like how we want, but here you can get an idea of, see how it kind of looks like it would have the texture of a piece of paper rather than it being perfectly smooth. Now, I kind of purposely did this too much to show you that you can change it at any time. That was the reason why we made a smart object. So because we made a smart object, we see we have the smart filters, which I can turn off and on at any time. And now we have our filter gallery right here, which I can just go ahead and double click to change this. So I think this spatter is just a little bit too rough. It doesn't look like the piece of paper. It looks more like a piece of stone or something. So we'll double click right here on filter gallery and we'll just bring our spray radius down a little bit and our smoothness up. There we go. And this is basically just like by eye. Let's hit okay. And here we can see that looks a little bit better. And I 
yeah, I kind of get the hint that that would be like pulled out of a piece of paper. So this looks great. Now, the next thing we have to do is separate the black icon, the fork and the knife from the white background, because you'll see here, it's both on the same layer, right? So what we're gonna do is go to select and then down to color range. We're gonna select and we're just have a little eyedropper here, boop, click on our eyedropper, and then just go ahead and click on the black icon there, okay? So it's gonna turn it white. Basically, this is saying whatever is white is going to be selected. So I'm just selecting black as my color range, basically. Let's hit okay. And you can see this turns into a selection. Now it does turn other areas that are dark into a selection up there too. So just keep that in mind. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just turn that layer off. We're gonna create a new layer up here and I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool. And we're gonna go ahead and paint black right over top of this, okay? So I'm just gonna paint black because the selection is totally independent of layers. So I can make a selection with one layer visible and then just paint it on another layer. So now we're ready to go. Everything is looking really, really good. So let's go ahead and just see what we've done. Now we have one layer. It has a transparent background and it has my distressed edging just like I want, okay? I still have this layer here that I can go back to at any time. I could even turn the filter gallery off. But what we want in the end is just our logo on a transparent background because that's gonna help us for our effects. So now let's go ahead in time to make that embossed effect. Let's zoom out a little bit. We're gonna double click right here on the layer and this is gonna bring up our layer style, okay? We're just gonna bring that to the top and I'm gonna bring this right down here and go ahead and zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit. I'm trying to fit everything on the screen. It's a little bit crammed, but we're gonna be able to see it. So the first thing I wanna do is right here at the top where it says blending options, we're gonna take the fill opacity and we're gonna drag that down to zero. What that does is it makes the object itself invisible, but your layer effects like bevel and emboss, for instance, are going to be visible. So our fill opacity, we're gonna bring that all the way down to the zero, and then I'm gonna turn on bevel and emboss. And immediately you can start to see our bevel and embossed effect. Here within our bevel and embossed dialog, I can change where the light is coming from. So we wanna match the light of the original image, right? So we can see we have a shadow off to the left going like that. So we wanna make sure our light source is coming from the right hand side. So it matches the light of the original image. Now we can do things like include how much depth we'd like this embossed effect to have. We can change how much size we want. You wanna keep that relatively low to make it look realistic and how much you wanna soften it and that's gonna help it look realistic too. See if it's not softened, it's not gonna look real. Give it a little bit of softness and there we go. We're looking a little bit better. All right. Fantastic. This is looking really, really nice. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure that our shadows and highlights match the original image. So here where you choose your shadow color, okay, double, go ahead and click on this. It might be black by default, but you can see that this doesn't look realistic, okay? This black shadow here, not going to look very realistic because, as you can see right here, we should have some sort of a brown shadow there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on our color here. And I'm gonna use my eyedropper to just hover right over that brown color and then make sure we're sampling that brown color and hit okay on that. All right, this is looking really good. Maybe I'll turn the size up this a little bit and go ahead and soften it up. By the way, you can change these settings at any time. So if you're not like for sure what you want to be visible here, you can change it. Now our highlight, we're gonna make that white and you can change the visibility of that and the shadows, you can change the visibility of your shadows. We wanna go just a little bit of shadow there. Okay, now this is looking good. It's embossed, it's pressed out of the piece of paper. We wanna add just one more shadow off to the left and that's gonna be like basically the shadow that would, it would cast on the piece of paper. So we're gonna go right down here in our layer effects and go ahead and add a drop shadow. So our drop shadow, again, we wanna make sure the color is the same color as the shadow in my image. So right here, so go ahead and click on your color. Go ahead and use your eyedropper to sample that color. Perfect. And now we can change our settings here with our drop shadow, so our distance, our opacity, I recommend keeping this pretty subtle. Obviously you can go super far with it if you want to. I recommend keeping it nice and subtle. Go ahead and bring our distance down, bring your opacity down, something like that. And then you can change your size here as well. There we go. That's looking really nice. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And here we can start to see our effect. So we've got basically an embossed effect. I wanna add a little bit of texture to this and give it a little bit of a blur as well because the edge is still a little bit too well-defined in my opinion. So we're gonna to go to filter down here to blur and over to Gaussian blur. 
There we go. And we're just going to give it a very subtle blur. Okay. So you can see how well the edges are defined now. It's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow here on my Gaussian blur. Okay. I want it to kind of match the, uh, there we go, match the blur level of the image itself. And that's looking pretty good, about 1.5. Now the bevel in the boss, I think is looking good, but it's a little bit too dark in the shadows. So I'm just going to take this shadow level and bring it down a little bit. So you can see it's kind of like a push and pull of effects here. I can keep changing these effects to get exactly what we want. There we go. And that's looking really, really nice. So the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of texture to this embossed effect. Let's go ahead and double click on our bevel and emboss there. We're going to click right where it says texture. There we go. Let's go to our texture tab. And then we can choose all types of different textures. I'm just going to choose like a grass texture. Okay, let's go ahead and scale this up and down and you can see it right here as well. I know we're a little limited. Let's go ahead and just move that off to the left and put that right there. So I can bring my depth up, okay, and then change my scale. And then my goal here is to make it kind of look like this piece of paper, okay? So you can go either depth can be a positive value or it can be a negative value. There we go. So let's go ahead and just bring this down. There we go and change our depth. I just want this to be very nice and subtle and something that it looks about like the depth of the piece of paper. There we go. That's looking fantastic. So we'll hit OK. And here we have a nice bevel and embossed look. Maybe the texture is a little bit too visible in my opinion now. So we can just go back to our bevel and emboss. No problem. We'll just bring that off to the left. Go ahead and take my texture. And we're just going to bring our depth a little bit lower. There we go. And then maybe a little bit less softened. Fantastic. That's looking really nice. So as you can see here, we have a beautiful embossed effect that really looks like it's a part of this piece of paper. So let's go ahead and finish this up. We have this menu from earlier. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and grab my polygonal lasso tool. We're just going to select part of this menu here. There we go. This is just done for a mock-up. Okay, let's hit Control or Command J and that's going to duplicate just that selection to a new layer. There we are. And we're going to hit Control or Command T for transform. Let's go ahead and rotate that around a little bit and scale it up. There we go. Hit enter, and now I just want to get this uh, white part invisible. So we're going to change this from normal down to a multiply. All right, we're going to go to image. We're going to go to adjustments and down to desaturate. I don't need any color there. You can see it looked a little bit bluish before. And now we're going to hit control or command L for our levels. And I'm just going to make my white point just a little bit to the left. It's going to make my lights a little bit lighter when we're in our multiply blend mode. That's basically just going to make them invisible. So there we go. Fantastic. And we'll just bring the opacity down um, that just a little bit. And here we have our <laughs> menu. Super fun, basically just like pulled from another menu. But again, the main effect here is our emboss effect. I just kind of wanted to show you what it might look like in, uh, you know, in context. Now, the cool thing about this emboss effect that I have here is that anything that I add to this layer is automatically going to be added to this emboss effect. So check this out. If I have my marquee tool, my rectangular marquee tool, let's go ahead and do a line right like this, right across the center there. Okay, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, and that's going to allow me to minus out that selection. So let's go ahead and minus out in the boundary of the fork and knife. So now we just have to the left and to the right. And if I hit Shift Delete, I can fill this with a color on that same layer. Now, keep in mind, my fill is at 0%. So it's not actually going to fill it with white here. Well, it will, but it will be invisible. But we'll just get a bevel and emboss effect right there. So if I hit OK and then hit Control command D to deselect, look at that. Now we just have white. For instance, I could even take my brush tool now and I could just draw on this layer. So anything I'm drawing on this layer, it's now drawing with a bevel and embossed effect. Obviously, it doesn't look as fancy, but I could say like chef choice or something like that if I was actually writing <laughs> in a way that looked cool. But here we have the idea. Anything that I put on this layer is now a bevel embossed effect. Other cool things we can do if I create a new layer and let's just say I have a new logo that I'm working on. So I, you know, just going to do a circle on this new logo. There we go. Hit shift delete. Go ahead and fill that with white on a new logo. I can turn this layer off and I can copy this layer effects from one layer to another by holding alt or option. I'm going to click this FX and click and drag. Just want to make sure the FX. So hold alt or option, go to the FX. You can see we have a FX effects there. Click and drag there, click on this layer and bring the field back down to zero. 
and now we have a bevel and embossed circle, okay? So really easy to copy these layer effects from one to another. I could hit Control or Command T, scale this around and you know, start to start to put it in places to kind of work on my design. Now, best thing of all, you can actually download this entire PSD on flurn.com. So you can go through all of these layers, you can get in there and take a look at all these settings and tweak them to yourself. So you can really get a good understanding of how all this works together. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're ready to learn more Photoshop, photography, and Lightroom, be sure to check out Flurn Pro. We've got over 200 tutorials and 500 Lightroom presets available for instant download. Thank you so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.